let's talk about ionic and net ionic equations. And in order to understand that, you need to know what an ionic equation is, what a net ionic equation is, and the third type, a molecular equation. So these are molecular equations with the formulas all together. Ionic equations is the ionic stuff gets broken at or the aqueous stuff gets broken into ions, the non-aqueous stuff doesn't get broken into ions. So that's the full ionic equation. The net ionic equation is only the non-aqueous stuff plus what either comes from it or turns into it. And you ignore the other stuff. So we'll look at all of those. Let's begin with, mm, this is a good starting place. How do you do it? One, balance the equation. You can't do any of the rest of this until you balance it because you've got to know how many of each ion is present. So one lead, one lead, two nitrate. Yes, see this parentheses, at two right here? This two distributes everything inside, which means there's two nitrates. This is only one nitrate right here. So I put a two right here, now there's two nitrates. There's also two potassiums. So let's put a two right here so that there's two potassiums, but that also makes two iodines. And we go over here and look, and oh look, there's two iodines, so cool. One lead, one lead, two nitrates, two nitrates, two potassiums, two potassiums, two iodines, two iodines. All right, that's good. Now we can do the full anic equation. So here's how it works. You're gonna split all the aqueous stuff up and don't split the non-aqueous stuff. So that means this is aqueous, so it's going to lead nitrate splits into lead and nitrate. I'm giving myself plenty of space for reasons I'll show you in a bit. Now there's two nitrates, so put a two here. The charge of a nitrate, you got to memorize, is a minus one. Or you can look it up, I suppose, for the homework's sake. But for the lead, you're going to have to figure out that charge. Now nitrates are minus one, and there's two of them, which makes a total minus two charge, which means lead must balance it by being a plus two. So it's gonna be lead plus two. Now, other complication, it's aqueous. When it breaks up, it's still aqueous, so make sure you put aqueous next to each of your ions. Same thing's gonna be true for here. Potassium, if you break it up in ions, it's gonna be just whatever charge the periodic table says. It's a plus one. Iodine is a minus one, just like all the rest of these. Lead, we had to figure it out because lead is one of those things that doesn't have a set charge. It can be anything. So I do a plus and then two potassiums with a plus charge because that's what the periodic table says potassium is. Like all of these, potassium is a plus one. And I'll put aqueous there. And then I'll add to that two iodines with a minus charge, aqueous. So that completes that. Arrow, because now we're gonna move on to here. See how that's solid? We can't break it up. So we just put P, B, I, two, solid. No charges, because it doesn't break apart. And then, because this one does break apart, because it's aqueous, we do have two potassiums, two potassiums with a plus charge, and it's aqueous, and two nitrates, aqueous, and don't forget their minus charge. Okay, so non-aqueous stuff stays together, aqueous stuff breaks apart. That's the assumption we make. And of course, you make sure to show the states, charges, and quantity of everything. Obviously, if there's no number written, you assume it's just one. Next, we do the net ionic equation. So. For the net ionic equation, what we do is we only look at the stuff that is not exactly the same between the sides, the stuff that's different. For example, you'll notice there's two potassium ions here and two potassium ions here. Those are called spectra ions because what's there at the beginning is still there at the end, so we don't count it. It doesn't do anything. On the other hand, notice that lead is present as a free ion at the beginning, and it's part of a compound, a solid compound at the end, so this is a difference. So this is not the same between the two, so it goes in the net ionic equation. Whereas two nitrates at the beginning, two nitrates at the end, that's the same. So you ignore them, this does not go in the net ionic equation. What you can do to help make it easier is cross out the stuff that's the same. So there's, just lightly cross it out so that it's still visible, but you know not to include it. So two potassium, two potassium, and then two nitrate, two nitrate. And that, what does that leave you with? Lead with a plus two charge and aqueous plus two iodines with a minus charge and aqueous produces lead to iodide solid. All right, so this is the way you would go about
figuring out the net ionic equation. It's just the solid thing plus the stuff that came together to make it. Now, be careful crossing these things out. Don't do it too heavily. We're grading your full ionic equation. We need to see that they are there. So make sure it's still visible enough to us to grade it, but also as you cross it out, it's for your benefits so that you know what doesn't go down here. All right, now, having said that, these will go the same way. You're going to do the same stuff. All right, now, that being what that is, notice that, okay, so like this won't break into ions because it's not aqueous. This will not break into ions because it isn't aqueous. That won't break into ions because it is not aqueous. However, you notice aqueous, 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 aqueous. So all these break into ions, which means it has no net ionic equation. You can just put Na here. Okay, because, yeah, there's no net ionic equation if everything is aqueous. The only way for there to be a net ionic equation is for something somewhere to be not aqueous. Otherwise, it's just ions to start with, ions to end with, and nothing really changes. All right, now, onward to this one. A full ionic and net ionic equation plus the balanced molecular equation for this. Now, for those of you who may have forgot what a double displacement reaction is, that's when each of the, you have two compounds and they replace pieces with each other. It says this reacts with this, so these are the compounds, which means the aluminum goes here, the hydrogen goes here. Let me write it out a different way. Aluminum hydroxide plus HCl. These are the two things reacting with each other. They're going to switch pieces with each other. So the hydrogen bonds with hydroxide. And what's hydrogen plus hydroxide? Well, that's called water. Hydrogen plus hydroxide is water, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so then what does aluminum plus chlorine make? Well, aluminum is a plus three, chlorine is a minus one, so that's one aluminum and three chlorines. That's aluminum chloride, ladies and gentlemen, that's what that makes. Now, that is the products of the reaction. Now, you've got to balance this reaction, because this is the molecular equation right here. We write the full formula. So uh, here's the thing. Aluminum hydroxide is um, your starting product. And you'll notice it's got three hydroxides. That's three oxygens on there. So we're going to want to have three oxygens here. and Because uh, otherwise, everything else looks about balanced. So I suppose you could do the chlorines first. But eh, let's do the, this one first. So three oxygen. Let's put a three here that we got three oxygens. All right. Now. I don't want to deal with hydrogen yet because hydrogen is present in multiple places. That's too complicated. So I'm not gonna, I know there's six hydrogens here. I'm not going to try to make it work yet. Instead, I do notice there's three chlorines. So let's put a three here. That way I got three chlorines and three chlorines. So what does that give me? I got three hydrogen plus three more makes six. And oh, look, there's six. So actually, you know what? This balances the whole thing. We're good. One aluminum, one aluminum, three oxygen, three oxygen. 3 plus 3 is 6 hydrogen, 6 hydrogen, and then 3 chlorine, 3 chlorine. Okay, that's good. Now for the full ionic equation. Now this, we need to look a little something up here. And this is something that might be a little difficult for people who might have forgotten this. Hydroxides are usually insoluble unless combined with one of these other things. So here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Aluminum hydroxide, is, according to this, is a solid. So we're going to put solid here. HCl is stomach acid. That's aqueous. If uncertain, we look right here. Halides are soluble. Unless combined with one of these things, H is not one of those, so halides are soluble. Water is a liquid. Come on, guys. Water does, does, does water dissolve in water? I guess, but it's because it's water is a liquid. And then aluminum chloride... We look at our solubility table and aluminum chloride. Chlorides are soluble. Aluminum is not one of the exceptions. So this is aqueous. So this is the information we need. Solid, aqueous, liquid, aqueous. Let's break that into a full ionic equation. This is not aqueous, so it's just aluminum hydroxide solid plus this is aqueous, so we break it into its ions. Three hydrogens and three chlorines. Three hyd oops, hydrogen plus ions, aqueous. Plus three chloride ions, 
aqueous, in case you forgot, chlorine is here. It's one of the one minus charges. And hydrogen is a one plus. And sometimes it's a one minus, but you know it's a one plus because it's the start of the formula. So anyway, that's the three hydrogens, that's the three chlorines, and let's do the arrow. That's not aqueous, it doesn't break apart, so it's three H2O liquid plus, and then this is aqueous, so we break it apart, aluminum, three plus charge, aqueous. That's right, aluminum is a three plus in case you forgot, right there. And then, uh, let's see, what is that? Three chloride ions, also aqueous. Now, what's the same on both sides? Is this some present on both sides? Nope, because here it's alum aluminum ion, and here it's aluminum. Is there hydrogen ion on both sides? Nope. Is there chloride ion on both sides? Yep. So we can do this. We can lightly cross out the three chloride ions because they are spectator ions. So then what does that allow us to do? We can then write our net ionic equation. Aluminum, hydroxide, three, solid, plus three hydrogen ions that are aqueous, spectator ions, so we don't include it in the net ionic equation, three H2O liquid, plus aluminum, three plus ion, aqueous. Now we just double check. Is everything all good here? One aluminum, one aluminum, three oxygen, three oxygen, six hydrogen, six hydrogen. Yep, this equation balances too. All right, that's our net ionic equation. Now, spectator ions. Remember these things are crossed out? Those are the spectator ions listed here. Just chloride. I mean, I guess you could put three chlorides, but and I guess you could potentially put like aqueous, but it doesn't really matter. You could have just put Cl minus and that works. It's the spectator ion. Now, as for this last one, I'll leave it to you to compare this equation with this equation and answer this for yourself. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you go about it.